just this month, Los Angeles, California, the family is distracted in a McDonald's restaurant. A woman walks in, grabs the four-year-old boy, picks him up, and walks straight out of the restaurant. Attempted abduction, caught 100% on tape. Also this month, in Fort Worth, Texas, a woman and her eight-year-old daughter are walking down the street. A man drives up, grabs the eight-year-old daughter in plain sight, pulls her into the car, and drives off. Fortunately, in that situation, they found the man, the car, and the daughter two days later, and she was reunited with her family. But this is happening every single day all over the world, and we have to be ready. This is every parent's worst nightmare. The thought of somebody abducting your child right in front of your eyes is unthinkable. So the question is, what can we do? Here are three safety rules to consider when you're out with your family. Rule number one, prepare your child. And what this means is the most important part of preparation is having a plan. So as soon as possible, you want to start having conversations with your child about potentially dangerous scenarios and situations. And this may even mean role playing mm -hmm. these situations. The most important one to role play and to explain to them is the scenario where if mom or dad is ever in danger and someone is trying to hurt us, the best thing they can do is run away to get help from mm -hmm. a stranger. And this is so important to drill home with them because their natural instinct will be to stay close to you and try to help or try to save you. Absolutely. The challenge is if all their lives, all they ever heard was stranger danger, don't trust stranger, 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 bad, stranger, no, stranger, stranger, don't. If that's all they ever heard their whole life, then switching that and saying, yeah, when mom's in danger, dad's in danger, go get a stranger to help. It doesn't match up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. So the key is teach your children to fear and respect and be concerned with behaviors, concerning behaviors, not just strangers in general. Because in a dangerous situation or if they're lost at a theme park, it's actually a stranger who's going to help save them and reunite them with their family. So teaching them the goods and the bads and how to recognize and respect behaviors over just the category that, in which a person falls. And this also falls in line with teaching them to listen to their instincts, to listen to their guts. Even as children, they have instincts, they have gut feelings, and to teach them to learn to trust those and respond to those. Absolutely, including being a hard target. If someone picks you up and violates you, teaching your child that, all the things that they're never supposed to do with you, yell, make a scene, punch, scratch, kick, all the things you've always taught them not to do, they need to do. Okay, now that's going to be some reprogramming for sure, and there's much more on that in the Kid Safe program, part of the Gracie Bully Proof Greater program, you can find at gracieuniversity.com. Rule number two, prepare yourself. Critical. You cannot protect your child if you cannot protect yourself first. Say it again. You cannot protect your child if you cannot protect yourself. That's why on the airplane, what do they always say? Put, Put on, on your, your own mask first before helping others. This applies on an airplane. It applies in a fight for your life. Any dangerous situation, protect yourself to make sure you can be around and be conscious to be able to help those around and you. And this means learning self-defense. And there's no shortcut. And if not for you, then for your family. Do it, you guys. Put in the time. There are absolutely techniques you can learn that will make all the difference in the world. We happen Even... to know one of the best self-defense programs <laughs> out there. And the principles. You. you can learn principles. The idea of distance management, knowing that there are safe distances to be at in a fight and there are dangerous distances, red zones and green zones. And you wanna know where are the green zones and how to avoid the red zones but you have to get to class, you have to learn the techniques. You can learn them in person at seminars, at classes, at a certified training center, or online at graceuniversity.com, but empower yourself. Like you said, if not for you, for your family, so you can better protect them in a dangerous situation. Rule number three, focus on the threat, not the child. Absolutely. Predators, in fact, will often specifically target parents of small children because they know the parent is distracted dealing with the child, making them more vulnerable of a target. So if I'm ever with my children and I sense danger or if I feel a threat, what is my motherly instinct going to tell me to do? Naturally, to to save and to protect my child, mm -hmm. to put my hands on my child or try to protect them. But what this actually is doing is what? Exposing me. Right. So now by holding my child and trying You're to protect them, yourself. I cannot protect myself. And more importantly, she can't manage distance between her and the attacker in that situation because her hands are tied up with the baby or the child. She can't deal with me at the same time and close that to a safe distance that we talked about before. So against all instincts, 
what we are actually asking you to do is to put the child down and to address the threat one-on-one -on -one here. Yes. Now this, you will only be likely to do this if you have already done rule number one and rule number two, right. which is rule number one is what? Establish that plan. So the moment you put your child down or you can trust that you can say, I need you to run and go get help and that your child will actually do that. So now you can address the threat. And rule number two, you invested in yourself. So you have the confidence that when you put your child down, you can deal with the threat and protect yourself in that engagement. If you don't believe you can, you won't. And that puts you in an even more exposed state against the attacker. That's right. So this is if you feel threatened. Now, if your child is actually threatened, <gasps> meaning they actually grab the child, this is obviously worst case scenario that anyone can potentially imagine. Right. And once again, our instincts will likely be to do what? grab the child right. and try to take them back. Tug of war. This creates a s scenario of tug of war. So instead of tug of war, I've got a better plan. <laughs> uh, uh, now I have the unfortunate dilemma. I have to choose between the child and the mom. If I keep the child, help's gonna show up and I'm gonna go to jail. Cause I'm not going anywhere right here. Mom's not letting go. If I let go of the child to deal with mom, the child goes away, gets help, and then mom eventually either waits for help or she can dis. If I start striking, she can sit up, she can disengage and she's out of the fight. She has options. Let's talk about it again. Mm -hmm. So because his hands are busy by holding the child, his legs are totally exposed, which means I can go low. I can wrap my arms around his knees, hold them together and just push him over. So I come low, watch the arms wrap. I connect the knees and now I can just drive forward oh. and I keep it here. I want to keep it so that again, he has a choice to make now. Yes. Either he lets go of the child and deals with me or he's stuck here. Or I keep the child and help and is And no one's away. going anywhere. And right? I don't want to go to jail, so what do I do? I let Bubba go. And I say, Bubba, run! Ah, he runs. Yeah. Go get help, Bubba. <laughs> run to safety! So now, because my legs are bound up, not only can I not get up, I actually have very little leverage to hurt Everett. I can try to fist punch her a little bit, but she's not going to be here for long, right? The second Bubba goes away, mm -hmm. she's disengaged, disengage, she gets up, she backs up. Here. Boom. Boom. Boom! Oh, man. Unnecessary, but cool. <laughs> Whatever it takes, okay? As they try to, if they do try to chase you afterwards. Right. You're up and you're out of there to safety. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. So important. Focus on the threat. And the threat specifically is the person trying to take your child from point A to point B. It's not just the person themselves. It's their attempt to move your child. And by binding their knees, you restrict their mobility, which in turn neutralizes the threat of abduction. That's right. But we can only focus on the threat rather than the child if what? Rules number one and number two are in place. So rule number one, talk to your child. Come up with a plan. Talk to them about safety. Have these conversations with them starting at a young age. Rule number two, prepare yourself. Learn self-defense. How do you do that? Upcoming women-empowered self-defense seminars all over the world for free. It's going down very soon, but you have to save your spot, and you can do so at GracieGirls.com. Find a location near you, save your spot on the mat, and join us for these life-changing seminar opportunities. And if you can't make it to one of these seminars, no problem. Our entire Women Empowered Self-Defense program is available on DVD and online at GracieUniversity.com so you can learn from home. Learn to protect yourself so you can protect your family. We'll see you on the mat.